A potential meter circuit is used to determine the unknown EMF of cell X. Where is cell X? Ah, we don't know what this EMF is. In the circuit shown, E is a cell with EMF that is known. Okay, we know this. Some volts. QR is a potential meter wire. And you have a contact S which can be moved around. So contact S is connected to a galvanometer and to cell X. Okay, what is not a necessary requirement to determine the EMF of X from the circuit? So, you know, usually um, when you see this kind of potential meter systems, if you want to find what wire X, you will adjust this jockey, this needle, put it at some position until the potential difference across this cell is same as the potential difference across this cell. And like this lah. Now let's call V, Q, S and the EMF of X. So if EMF of X is the same as V, Q, S, then your galvanometer will show no deflection. Then um, galvanometer zero, basically saying no current flowing through that small loop down there. Usually you say, oh, got current. Ah. No, 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 no current. This is what we call a balanced potential. So if you want to find this, you need to find this V. Okay. Now let's look at the choices. A says the EMF of cell X must be lower than the EMF of cell E. Mm, yes, that's generally true. Why? Because this one has to be pretty big. Lah. Because you need to be able to push the current in this direction. Now if your your, your battery down here is having much larger EMF, it might start to force the current to flow backwards instead, which will then spoil up your system, depending on how it goes. So generally, the main circuit up there must have the bigger EMF for its battery. So this one, we, we kind, of, kind of need this to be working. B says the internal resistance of cell X must be known. Oh, interesting. What if this one got internal resistance? Do we need to know it? Mm, actually, it would affect certain potential meter, uh, a potential difference. But if there's already no current for how these potential meters need to work, if there is no current, then there would, wouldn't matter if there's internal resistance or not because there will be no lost volts. So it doesn't really care. Ah, yeah, we don't know. Got internal resistance, no internal resistance. It doesn't really matter. So we don't really need this. Not oh. Not a necessary requirement. I think I would go with B. But let's check the rest also. C says the lengths QS and QR must be determined accurately. I mean, do we need that? We, we just need to know their resistance. The length. If we know the length, that's great. Because then from there, we can know the resistance and do a ratio of R over L. I don't know, RQS over LQS, uh, RSR against LSR. That will be ratioing these two sides. But even if we did not know the length, if we know the potential, we know the resistance, we could still get by. So we kind of need the stuff. We could get by, but we can't really go far because we still need to do this ratio of length. So I think we, nah, we, we, we need the stuff. We need the stuff. Okay, D says... The resistance of wire QR must be proportional to the length. Oh yes, this one we need to. Because for us to assume these in the first place, it comes from the equation R equals to rho L over A. For us to get to this conclusion in order to come up with the ratio of lengths uh, against resistance, we need that relationship to be true. You cannot have a thin wire and then thick wire and then the, the diameter keep changing. Cannot. Okay, so at the end of the day, the one that we can choose that is most sure is that we don't need internal resistance. We don't care because there's no current flowing through this battery down here if you are finding your balance point. That's the whole purpose of how potential meters uh, work. Okay, so that's all for this video. See you in the next one.